Welcome to the Navigating Cancer Together podcast. My name is Talea Dendi. I'm an 11-year cancer thriver, cancer doula, and owner of On the Other Side. I use my experience to help others get on the other side of cancer. Gaps between the guidance, emotional support, and education that are needed and what one receives can be huge. This podcast fills those gaps by sharing stories, resources, and information about all things related to cancer and wellness. I interview guests from all walks of life who are living with cancer, caregivers, and those who are thriving on the other side. Also, I talk with organizations, healthcare professionals, and experts in the health and wellness spaces who offer complimentary and integrative care. Join me. We are in this together. Disclaimer, the purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. The podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. It is not a substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professionals and is not intended for the use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests who speak in a podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Conclusions. Neither Talea Dendi, Navigating Cancer Together, On the Other Side, LLC, nor any of its affiliates endorses, supports, or opposes any treatment option or other matter discussed in a podcast. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy on a podcast should not be construed as an endorsement. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I am your host, Talea Dindi. Today, our very special guest is Mary P. Wells. Mary is best known as their encouragement expert. She is an eight-year breast cancer thriver and founder and chief visionary officer of One Word Encourage, LLC. The ministry focuses on sharing God's words of encouragement worldwide for people to thrive in all seasons of their lives. Mary is passionate about speaking life to those impacted by their circumstances, including breast cancer. Recently, the ministry launched the One Word Encouraged LLC Breast Cancer Awareness Essential Kits to offer patients, caregivers, and families on the cancer journey together to receive helpful products to use as encouragement and to give them hope. Mary is also the international best-selling author of the OWE Journal Trilogy series. Mary's most significant accomplishment is being a mother to her 11-year-old son, Caleb. Mary, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. It's an honor. Thank you. (laughs) I have been looking forward to this interview, Mary. We've had an opportunity to talk a couple times, and I just enjoy what you're doing. I enjoy talking with you, your spirit, everything. So I know that what you share today is going to benefit the listeners. Mary, as I mentioned, you're an eight-year breast cancer survivor. Please walk us through, number one, how you learned that you had breast cancer, And when you were actually diagnosed, what were you thinking? I was actually diagnosed. A lump was found on my right breast during my annual exam and my OBGYN found it and referred me to a surgeon. Had tests ran on that area. And the surgeon asked me if I could come back the next day. I said no. (laughs) <laughs> because I had just started a new position and with a new company. So I was within the 90-day window and I couldn't take off, which I thought I couldn't take off. So he said, well, can you come back the other day, the next day? And I said, is, is it serious? Do, do I need to come back? And he said, yes, bring your husband. And I was diagnosed on a Wednesday. I was just straight out told, that I had breast cancer. It looked like it might be stage three, that it was very aggressive. I was told on a Wednesday and I was immediately told that I would need a mastectomy, that they would have to remove my right breast. And told on a Wednesday, we can do the surgery on Friday. Two days later, I said, absolutely not. It was a major blow. 
out of nowhere because neither of the history are on our sides. And the first thing that I thought of was how I was going to look. And, and I asked the question, am I going to lose my hair? And the surgeon said, yep, probably. And he said, I would probably need an aggressive treatment plan and to go through the plan. And because the cancer was spreading very quickly, we agreed to the following week to start on the journey and to have the mastectomy, which I did. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mary. How did that news impact your husband? My husband was, he was just in shock because he didn't know what to say at all. He asked the question, if she does not do this plan, whatever the plan may be, what is the length of time of her life expectancy? The surgeon said five years, that's it. He didn't know what to say. I literally was hysterical, yelling and screaming. And I knew I had to go right down to the breast center to start the process. I walked out, left everything walked out the door, got on the elevator, went down to the breast center, and my husband initially came down. But like, horrible news. Because we were newly married, and our son at the time was two years old. That's tough. With such a young baby at two years old, what kind of support did you have? I'm sure your husband supported you. Did you have some support outside of your husband? It's very interesting that you say that. The daycare where he was going, we told, they said, whatever it is we need, whatever hours that need to be adjusted to pick up Caleb and to drop him off, we are here. My husband did not take it well. And he didn't do well with seeing me and everything with regards to loss. Going from a size 10 to a 2, losing hair, losing nails, everything that comes along with it. A lot of loss. He just couldn't, he couldn't handle it. And so God placed a group of people in my life, seven of them that were friends, a few were friends, but most of them I did not know. When I look back, they were assigned to this journey to help me, to encourage me. The company that I worked for, the employer, the department from top down headquarters in New York supported me because the chief officer had been impacted several years back. He had very close friends who succumbed to breast cancer. And so whatever it is he said that I needed, they were there. He was actually there with the team. I asked them to come and come to the hospital after I had my mastectomy. I don't know these people, but they came. And then there were people specifically assigned in and out your journey. I didn't know these people. They were God sent because they always spoke words of encouragement over me. So the support system was very big. People had their assignments, whether it was to work with me on receiving a refund for my wig, whether it was, I'm going to take you to and from your appointments, whether it was a social worker who said you qualify for a grant that will help pay for your medicines, whether it was the person in Bob Evans, and I couldn't really sit up, so they accommodated me sitting up and seeing, making sure I was okay with it. There were so many people that played the role, their role that God assigned to them. When I look back, going through it, it was a lot. It was overwhelming as well, but I'm very thankful for all the people in and out. <laughs> but there were seven that were extremely close that played their role, whether it was a checkup on it. I'm just here to call a check in, whether it was to transport, whether it was to get me outside, whether it was to just take me different places. And also the person that I reported to, she basically watched over me, talked to me, helped me. I would not settle for me to think anything bad about myself because I didn't look the same way I look. I, was not that same person, but she saw that I was being transformed into someone else during the entire process. Thank you for sharing that, Mary. You mentioned a couple times that your appearance has changed and you were concerned about that early on, Mary. How did you, throughout your cancer journey, how did you work through that? I worked through that. What's interesting is working through that started understanding that the words that I speak 
become reality. I always wanted curly hair. I used to have long straight hair. So here I am with curly hair and I don't have to do that much to it. I always wanted my skin to be more clear before. Or there were some imperfections with my skin, like kind of like breakouts. I don't have that. Also, being more health conscious pays off. Walking, drinking more water. I started to see that, Mary, you're never going to look the same. Whether you've encountered cancer or whatever, we all get older. And I started to see also that those words were helping me from the inside out. So I started to smile to really see a transformation. And I had to understand that what is in the past is where the past is and where I am now is who I am. Thank you for sharing that because I know that really anyone going through cancer, they think about that at some point, some people more than others. And I know that it weighs heavy on women just because of the standards that were held to. Did you happen to talk with a therapist or anything like that during your cancer journey? Actually, no. <laughs> um, there were the people that were close to me, they're Christians. They are faith, Bible believing Christians. And so, they would say to me something to the effect. I would say, oh, I don't look the same or not having a good day. They would turn that around and they would say, okay, we don't have good days. However, we could not be here. There's This is much bigger than you. And I didn't understand that. The bigger picture was they wanted me focused on the why. And the why was a two-year-old. Focus on your son. Focus on being here for him. There's a reason why you're here. You're here for him. And I at first didn't want to rock short hair. I'm talking like a fade, <laughs> like guys. <laughs> and I never saw myself bald. At home, we put up like cloths so I couldn't see my wig cut or styled and washed. The instruction was you always have to put a black cloth up on all mirrors. She doesn't want to see. But one of my co-survivors, I called my team co-survivors, went with me. They were cleaning my scalp and all. She said, you know what? You never lost all your hair. You got like this peach fuzz. <laughs> and it started to grow back a little. But before that, I encountered, I went into the office on off chemo weeks and I encountered an airborne virus and she had to rush me to the emergency and I ended up having to work from home for two months. They allowed me to, God made a way for me to work from home for two months. Nice. And I was the first non-exempt employee to work from home. Now, when you're on a leave of absence like that, you don't work. But God had me to because I could still move my fingers and do the work that was needed because I worked in HR. But I'm bringing this home to say that I had a fever in my scalp and my hair was just the wig and there was a smell. So when I went to the wig place after being released from the hospital, they took it off and stood back and was like, you have a fever. But see, God had me to purchase a wig from this particular business because that's what they do. That's what they study. They know all about the cancer, the treatments and what type of wigs will work and the medicated cap inside. And so I went under their laser every two weeks eventually welts to little freckles to nothing. But I say that for the simple fact that they ended up saying, your hair is really low now and you really look good if you would rock it. And I just wasn't ready. So one appointment, I said, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to see how I look <laughs> without the wig. And it took it off and I looked and I said, I don't look that bad at all. And they started laughing. I said, next appointment, no more wig. Sure enough, that was it for the wig. I had it in the box and all and everything. And I started rocking this low fade. And um, I would be out and people, men would say, excuse me, want to know where you got your fade done because we really like it. And I would smile and say, thank you. I didn't say anything, but I was thinking if you only knew. And then it was low and then it started growing and curly. 
And that's when I started doing more of the curly look. I know it's a long story. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That's so important because it really lays out that individual journey on that specific thing. And that's what I always say about cancer is not just about the cancer. People have to experience so many different things. And in this case, it was you had to get to a point where you were okay with the way that you were looking the new look that you had and thankfully you had very supportive people who just encouraged you to embrace the new you and i think that is such a blessing because so many people are left alone to try to figure that out and work through that yes and mary what is one of the first things that you recommend people do after they receive a cancer diagnosis i would say have your moment Mary, how has cancer changed you as a person? We've touched on this a little bit, and your worldview. In a nutshell, how are you different? Do you see things differently? I see things very differently. I see that what we go through, we can go through. It wouldn't happen if God didn't allow it. And the worldview is that he never leaves you. Everywhere you go, he goes. And you will get through to the other side, but it's actually for somebody else. I've never thought that I would be an advocate and share my story because at first, I admit I was ashamed. But when God starts revealing to you what your purpose is, my purpose was revealed to me by raising money and being part of the walk and creating a team. And I was the HR manager and I led this when the ladies would go out on leave and help them and encourage them, not knowing that I was going to be in their shoes later on. But that went all out the window. But I say that for the fact that everybody is going to go through something and everybody's going to face something that's going to be the life changing circumstance that changes everything, and that is this. God sends people to help. So when I returned back in the office after being out for two months, I ended up getting promoted. Didn't even know I was promoted to an actual department because the position was a newly created position. And then on top of that, I just finished chemotherapy, getting ready to go into radiation for 30 days. And I was asked by human resource business partners if I would come and speak to employees who were newly diagnosed. Wow. Can, can you come and speak to them? Can you share some encouragement? Can you give them some information or insight? I could barely walk down the hall. Mary, is that what encouraged you to do the work that you're doing today? It sounds like that was your first stepping stone to what you're doing now. That's correct. Wonderful. It's so interesting because a lot of times we talk ourselves out of things. For example, we'll say, I don't know enough. I don't have enough money to start a business. I can't do that. I'm not educated in this, that, or the other. But you were, in a sense, thrust into it. Why didn't you say no? It just became my passion. It was just on my mind all the time. I actually was speaking about my journey before I even thought about possibly being an entrepreneur. I even I was even in doing encouragement on social media platforms every day nice. with my son. Didn't have a clue. Just going on, just going on. And actually hosting an event. It was called to Thrive back then. Nice. Back then with no idea. Still in corporate. I'm hosting an event. Okay, here's the topper because I thought about it yesterday. Working corporate person next to me is part of marketing and social media, right? So we had a marketing department right downstairs and I saw somebody and I was like, let me look him up on LinkedIn. And I was like, he's in marketing and he owns his own business and coaching and branding. Let me send him a message. So I did. And we met. He said, I want you to think about it. Nice. I want you to think. I'm not going to 
say anything else. And I did. Let me tell you something. I had a coach and a branding strategist didn't even have a business. Wow. You had everything laid out. And didn't take a class, didn't do any of that because it was in me. I want to do this. I want to do that. I need a coach back then. Wow. Mary, I asked that question because a lot of times, and it's okay, For some people, they just don't want to talk about it. They just want to close that chapter. And for other people like yourself and I, we talk about it more freely. And while you were going through it, you were asked to speak in a sense. And a lot of people would have said, no, I'm not ready for that. And so I just want to applaud you for even taking that opportunity, whether you were ready or not to share your story and encourage other people, because that is so important. What I found is that when doing that, you're helping yourself also. And I think sometimes that's the part that people that are hesitant to step out there, that's the part they don't think about, because I found it to be very therapeutic. But then also, it's just confirming that what I went through wasn't in vain. That's correct. You're absolutely right. Yes, I like that. Faith has come up throughout our conversation, Mary. How did your faith keep you along your cancer journey and even into survivorship? What part did it play in your whole process? Actually, I <laughs> I was a servant leader. Yes, I was a servant leader. Um, as a director of education, Christian education, taught vacation Bible school and Sunday school and youth ministry and all that went out the window. I'm just so call it for what it is. It went out the window. That's the last thing on my mind. Really thought that I was being punished. I was like, how can this happen? I'm newly married. We have a child. I started this job that I love with this great company. I'm now, I'm going through this treatment. I can't because I had chemo brain as well. I can't remember everything. But I started thinking in the the spirit. See, the thing is, once you are always a part of the body of Christ, it doesn't matter. Once you're in, you have to come back, come on back. And so that's where the words of encouragement came from. They didn't come. Even though the people were used, they always spoke something. They spoke a word, and I remember those words. And sometimes when I was able to write it down, I'd write it down and post it up. I am beautiful. I am strong. (laughs) I am courageous. Just to start speaking that you can do this, that you can walk down that flight of stairs. Don't be up in the bedroom all day long laying down. Come on, you can at least stand. You can do this. And so once it just was repetitive, and people just kept encouraging me. And even if they didn't know me at work, they would smile, how you doing, those types of things. And then it started making a difference. It started because the words, the words are our life. And I didn't know that until further months. And now we're in the years down the road. And that's when, okay, eventually I rededicated my life back to Christ. So... I've learned. And has it always been easy? This life isn't easy. But we know who we can turn to and who God will bring. Because a lot of times we go through things of helping other people. We end up helping other people. And getting through the other side is when I remember, and I'll never forget, these people encouraged me or were sitting with me even through the darkest of the dark. That's who we sent so important because when we're going through it, it's so hard. I don't want to make it sound easy, but it's so hard to really hone in on those things because at times you're just so focused on surviving and it's just so important. And I think in my case, and I'm sure yours, it's just critical to have that anchor. And to me, that's what faith is was and still is, is that anchor. And even after cancer, when there have been tough times after, and I had to remind myself that I got through that so I can get through this. So this is nothing. You are right. You are right. I think about that a lot because even back then when I said it, 
had no idea was going to come to fruition in this way. We thrive. That's what we continually do no matter what, no matter what it looks like. We live by what we believe, not by what we see, because what we see is always changing, always changing. But what we believe, now that's firm, that's foundation, that's rock, that's solid. Mary, you just used the word thrive, and I describe myself as a thriver. I've learned that you do also. Why is that word thrive so important to you? Because it states that you are limitless to whatever it is that you face. Because when one thing, one circumstance ends, one storm, whatever you want to call it, crisis, whatever, however you want to term it, here comes another and another. It does not stop in this life. You have to know that for yourself. That's why these storms, that's why situations come. You're limitless. There's nothing that in life, in this life, that with your belief and knowing for yourself, you're going to, it's going to overcome. We've already won the victory. We've already won it. But if if you're complaining and speaking negatively, that's going to be the outcome. You may think you're crazy and foolish and laughing, let them laugh. No matter what the statistics are, no matter what the people say, the belief never changes. Weight will always change. I agree. So agree. It's so important to keep a good mindset because like you said, what you start to say and put out there, that can become reality. You're speaking that over your life, your body, your health. And so those negative things, you don't want that to get inside of you. And it's so important to be mindful of what you say. Even if you don't have cancer, just every day. It's so important to be mindful of what you say and what you put out there. When you are talking negatively about your body, your health, your cells, your immune system, they hear that. (laughs) And I'm a firm believer that they can absorb that. So just don't do it if you can. Just try really hard not to do it. Mary, what do you consider the best advice to assist someone who has been impacted by cancer? I would say from my journey is to pick a team and pick a strong team. I remember I picked five and they were very strong. They weren't going to have a pity party with me. Now this is what we're going to do. But God is not going to allow you to go through this without people. You assign people. For yourself, you're going to need a point of contact. You're going to need someone to How are you going to get to and from where you need to go? Is there someone you can call once you're home from your appointments? And who is that emergency person? Because I encountered a virus. Emergency person. That's what it's for. Emergency. And then also someone who's going to actually, and if you don't, for someone who will go with you, your appointments. Because it's very overwhelming. And you will not remember everything. There's just no way. But a team, even if it's just three people. And what is always good is to find someone who, like I'm a chaplain in a breast cancer support group. Back in 2013, I didn't know of any support groups, just one. And it was really big. And so I was intimidated by how big it was. But the support group, that I'm in, have more and more patients, just call. Someone like me, who's they'll call and request prayer, and I'll call back, that's part of my role, but then I ask them, is there anything you need? Someone in a chaplaincy role, someone who may be a counselor, someone that you may say, I need help to, can go and do some research and say, oh, here's an organization, or I called my church and they're going to see what they can do to help. So the team is a must. Mary, in addition to having a team and support groups, are there any other resources that helped you along your cancer journey and that you would recommend to others? One, I would say one thing to have, (laughs) which is a must. There is a strong chance that you'll get to the point where you won't want to eat. Strongly suggest that you at least have something to drink, whether it's an insure or something of that nature. 
But I would also say as far as things that are now, strongly suggest listening to the Word of God. Listen, whether it's a podcast whether it's a sermon, whether it's an audible, listen to positivity and encouragement. For myself, I had to have it spoken to me, but now you can hear it in so many different ways. It's what helped me. I can only share my experience and my journey and what it's helped me. So those are some helpful resources. Of course, the support group that I'm chaplain over has gone national now. However, and of course, the ministry that I'm over, we have support services to actually accessible in a kit that addresses those basic essentials that you need. Wonderful. And thank you for sharing your experience and the things that helped you. So this is a great time, Mary, to segue into the work that you're doing and the journal series that you have. Please, Mary, tell us about the work that you do to support people with cancer, but then also your journal trilogy. Sure. So one word, encourage. See, we share God's words of encouragement for you to thrive. Usually during such circumstances as cancer, you don't want to hear all that. <laughs> to be honest, for our very first t-shirt line was strong. That's right from the word of God. Be strong. That's a commandment. Be strong. But what's most important is people call and ask for prayer, but I'll always give them a word. That's what One Word Encourage is all about. It's birthed from my journey. And to get into the offering of the journals, the journals came about because I journal my journey, but then I had neuropathy, which is a side effect of chemotherapy, and I was not able to hold the pen. So I was unable to journal. So I'm still in corporate. And what was in my spirit was do a journal. Do a journal. I said, I'm doing this journal actually for the caregiver because the caregiver can journal for the patient or the family member can journal for the patient or the caregiver or family member can just journal themselves because they are going through it with them. So the very first journal is victory. Yes, you will have the victory. And then a little bit of my story is on the back. So I thought I was going to stop there, right? I'm stopping there. No. <laughs> But wait a minute, you have a business now. You have a ministry and it's not yours. It's God. So you're going to do a journal on that. So this one is with regards to his promise. When we journal out promise, your business is God's business. So you actually work for God. You want to stop there? Nope. This was the one that was the hardest to do. And it's thrive because that's not the only thing that I go through. This was with regards to illness. This is to thrive continually, no matter what you face. So that was actually the first journal was written in a weekend. I kid you not, written in a weekend, in pencil, in my child's notebook, and then ready for edit. So actually, that was done while I was still incorporated. I wrote the very first journal in a weekend. Congratulations and great work. That's dedication. And that's yes. knowing what your purpose is also. Yes. And not only did I do that, I'm not, I'm creative, but trying to sketch something. I actually sketched the very first, actually it was three of them, bracelets. I took a quarter and I took my son's crayons. <laughs> and that same weekend, I did these bracelets that you keep hearing. Sorry about the sound, <laughs> but it's strong. And we have unity and thrive. So those were, again, done before even leaving corporate. And then I knew that we were going to do a t-shirt line. So all this was really done in a weekend. Oh, wonderful. To your point about the one word, what is one word of encouragement that you have for the listeners? The one word of encouragement is actually what I'm wearing. It's strong. The, the strength is already within you. The strength is right inside of you. Your mouth, your tongue, what you speak, what is on your heart, what is in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's from the inside out. So tap into the strength. It's already there. Use it. It's strength that, that you don't even know how powerful you are, how strong you are. You are. 
It's already there. And there's no price tag that you can put on it. It's yours. And no one can take it away from you. It's right there and it's present. I'm a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I just love everything that you're doing. I love your product line. Where can people, Mary, find out more about you, the work that you're doing, and the products that you have as well? Sure. Just go right to our website. It's one word encouragement.com spelled out O N E W O R D encouragement. Dot com, and you will see all of the offerings there. If you're interested in any of the kits that Mary mentioned, you can visit her website, and I will include the link to Mary's website in the listen notes as well. Mary, before we end, I'd like to ask my guests two questions. And the first one is, what is something that you've learned in life that you would like to share with the listeners? I've learned in life that everyone has value. Nothing more to be said there. I could not agree more. Yes. And finally, Mary, in addition to all the wonderful things that you're already doing, what is next for you? Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to go and say <laughs> <laughs> what is next. There are a lot of collaborations. I'm in the middle of writing a book. The book is actually something I always say at the end of whatever go live that I do. And the book is called Positivity and Peace, Always and in All Ways. And I am manager with Emojo Magazine and Your Solution Services. And being with them will give me the opportunity for that book to be on a global level offering so it will be translated in four languages, many, many people all over the world. So we have Africa, we have French, we have Swahili, we have Spanish, and we have English. It's what is coming. So we offer coaching services as well. And if anyone is interested in having a keynote speaker that they need someone to come and to speak on some of the subject matters that I share, I'm a keynote speaker as well. Wonderful. And congratulations on everything that you have accomplished and all the things that are coming up. I know that you will do very well with them because you have so far. And Mary, as I mentioned earlier in this segment, I am just so honored to be talking with you. I'm so happy that we met. And I just, again, love your spirit. I think that it's something that a lot of people need. Again, thank you for coming on and sharing your story and your experience. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, this isn't the only time that, that we see each other. I'm looking forward to many other opportunities as well to collaborate together. I'm looking forward to it as well, Mary. Before we end, Mary, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners? Um, I would like to share this. Our circumstances do not take us captive. They don't. They're circumstances. And they don't last forever. They're temporary. With God, you will make it on the other side. And then <laughs> you go and share it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Mary. It's been such a pleasure. For being today, I would like to give a shout out to the listeners. That is it for this Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you have enjoyed this episode, please share, subscribe, and tell everybody about this podcast. You can find this podcast, Navigating Cancer Together, on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and many other major podcasting platforms. Until next time, let's keep navigating cancer together. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the show, please share or tell your friends and family about it. For notes from the show and previous episodes, visit ontheotherside.life and check out the podcast section. I would love it if you joined us for the next episode. Talk to you soon.